Hey guys, Will and Elliot here, and today's update video, we're going to actually talk about unit design and the inner workings of the game, how we balance units, and show you some exciting new units. Yeah, so we're actually announcing three new units today, as well as some rebalancing to existing units in Prismata. And our intention is to do this regularly throughout the alpha and the beta, and finally when Prismata itself is released. If we see changes that we can make to the existing units in the game that improve gameplay, we're going to aggressively make those changes. And because we don't have to worry about like reprinting cardboard or you know angering the players that have worked <laughs> hard to earn their favorite unit that we're now nerfing, um, we can push these changes pretty freely. Um, one note about balance in Prismata. Um, if a unit in Prismata, like some people say, oh, this unit's OP, this unit's underpowered, or something like that. And the way it really works is we want every unit in Prismata to be influential in some way. We want for each unit in Prismata there to be some situation where that unit is the best unit. And I think that's essentially true. Um, but what ends up happening is some units, because they fit into a little niche strategy or or it's hard to execute the strategy that works with that unit they end up getting bought less and the thing we want to optimize is the variety in the strategies that are available to you every time you see a random set in Prismata um, and sometimes the way we do that is by strengthening units that maybe are already perfectly strong but don't see as much play because they're harder to fit into a strategy. Yes, like every unit has sort of a piece of the efficient frontier and all we're doing by changing the cost is changing how big a piece of the efficient frontier a unit has. And like in Prismata, you'll never see strict dominance. You'll never see one unit that's strictly better than another unit. Every unit has a situation where it's the perfect thing to get. So. Right, so let's talk about the balance changes. All right. First one's Blood Pact. So, right, so this, so we buffed this unit. It used to cost four and a red. Now it only costs three and a red, and it's actually a spell. It constructs four husks, which are these uh, finesseful defenders for you, and it constructs a tarsier, which is an, at an attacker for your opponent. Right, so we, the reason we improved this, like when we first put out Blood Pact, a lot of people were like, this unit sucks. You know, I get four defense, my opponent gets four offense, four turns later, they have an attacker and I have nothing. Um, and the thing about Blood Pact is you, you, you might think that it sucks, but then you realize if you get it one turn before the game ends, then you get four defense, your opponent gets one attacker, and it only attacks once, so you, you sort of get three defense for really cheap. Um, and so there's always this transition point where Blood Pact transitions from being a bad unit to a really good unit. And what we've done by making it cheaper is just put that transition point a little bit sooner in the game. So Blood Pact will see a bit more play, you'll be able to get it sooner, it'll be more efficient, it'll be more impactful in games. Yeah, there's so going to be that's our hope. a lot of pacting, and I'm excited for these pact games. <laughs> uh, okay. The next one, Frostbreeder. So it's a unit that builds a Frostbite every turn. Frostbite is like an auxiliary attacker that allows you to get through your opponent's defense for a turn so that you can damage their more vulnerable units. And it used to have lifespan 10. Now it only has lifespan 8, which means instead of making 10 Frostbites, it only makes 8 Frostbites over the next 8 turns. Yeah, so the reason we decrease the lifespan, like, Frostbrooder is a very um, silver bullet type of unit. It's a hard counter to the specific strategy of getting walls and getting vulnerable attackers behind those walls. And we had a lot of players, especially beginners, say, Frostbrooder's so OP, it's crazy. And it, it's, it's not that it's OP, it's just that it's very strong against that specific strategy, which is a strategy that a lot of beginners learn first first when they play Prismata. Obviously Frostbrood is horrible against, you know, Gauss cannons or something like that. Um, but what we've done is we've dialed back its influence just a little bit so that it won't be so oppressive that it, it actually prevents other strategies from being playable. Because yeah, we never yeah. want to see units decrease the number of viable strategies in a game. So we've pulled it back just a little bit. Yeah, so it's not like it's at, you can actually defend against it sometimes. Um, Auric Impulse. So, so this is this is a small change. We're just redoing the art and the name of the old unit Victory Bond, and that's it. I mean, the old the old name was kind of an inside joke. It was kind of lame. <laughs> so new art. The new name. art is awesome. Yeah. Um, all right. So the next one is a new unit. The first new unit is Fission Turret. Um, so it's a very very cheap attacker, and it only lasts four turns. But 
before it dies, it sort of has this ability that you could choose to use. You don't have to. Um, you could pay for energy to get for green tech. So energy is what you use to build up your economy. But you could suddenly decide you don't really need to further strengthen your economy. And you can suddenly convert all of your energy into a sudden burst of green tech. And this can give you a lot of options and a lot of build orders. Yeah. So you got to think of this as, you know, it's this little reactor powered gun. Um, that you know it's going to explode in four turns it's going to overheat and die but if you want you can harvest that uh, green radioactive gaussite from it right before it blows up and one thing about the fission turret is that it fits nicely into some rushy build orders if you go first you can open drone drone then drone conduit then drone drone fission turret and it's a very efficient build if you go second you can open drone conduit then go drone fission turret and then the turn after drone drone fission turret and both of those build orders are very strong aggressive rushy opening so we hope that we're going to see more aggressive play with the green tech now that we've added the fission turret. Yeah, it's going to allow a lot of early openings. And even if you don't plan on using the ability, it's still going to allow you to uh, threaten a lot of rushes. But Elliot, is it fission or is it fusion? It's, oh. it's fission. <laughs> And so in a previous Kickstarter update, I, I named it Fusion Turret. And um, I, I actually named this unit originally. And I, I know the difference between fission and fusion. It's based on radioactive decay of this Gaussite substance. It's clearly fission. It's not fusion. Um, I just posted the wrong name because I was really tired when I, uh, when I put together the update. It was just a typo. Um, but it is Fusion Turret. And I, I, I know that's going to be a joke forever. But whatever. It is what it is. All right, so the next one is Immolite. So if you've seen the unit Scorchilla, this is sort of like a baby version of Scorchilla. And it's a very, very cheap attacker, even cheaper than Fission Turret. And it only attacks every other turn. But just because it's sort of a smaller version of Scorchilla doesn't mean it's a worse version. It's actually much easier to fit into your build order than Scorchilla. And you can, use, you can easily fit it into a lot of early red-based rushes. So I'm also really excited to see what openings that this allows. Yeah, so in testing we found that this allowed people to put on a lot of aggression really fast. It's very similar to Perforator in that respect that you can get up attack for a lot, like, you know, really cheap uh, off of red. So uh, it's an interesting unit. I think you guys will like it. Yeah, it's just another option sort of for red tech to get an early attacker. And it's going to be interesting when whether you get this or Perforator or all the other options out there. So, um, All right, so the last one is Sinestra. It's uh, it's a it attacks for three. It doesn't cost that much, um, but the weakness is it only has two health. So you gotta protect it with walls, or it's very easy to pick off. Yeah, it's very similar to a Shadow Fang type of unit. The main difference is that you actually need less tech to get it. You can get it off of a single Animus and a single Conduit just by saving up the green for the Conduit. So there'll be more interesting choices with regards to the tempo and the timing of when you put it out. But it does occupy a similar niche to the Shadow Fang. Yeah, I look forward to seeing like timing attacks where you can get two of these on the same turn, and it's very possible. Yeah, that could be pretty crazy. <laughs> we, found, we found people really like units like Shadow Fang, so we want to bring more of them into the game sooner. And in particular, all three of today's units are attackers. We felt that maybe things were getting a bit too defensive, so we have this long list of units that we're waiting to release, and we thought, well, let's put in some attackers. It's about time. Yeah, so I look forward to seeing what sorts of new early rushes that you guys come up with with these new units. Yep. All right. And that's it for today's update. I will see you guys next time. Yeah, we'll see you later.